So in the last video, we used Lens Studio's visual effects graph. In this video, we're gonna use Unity's visual effects graph. This is something I've never explored before, but I think it is super cool. All these visual effects run on the GPU, whereas the normal particle system that we're used to runs on the CPU. So this little demo, for example, is 5,000 particles running on my iPhone with Vuforia cylinder tracking as well. Okay, so today we're gonna to use the visual effects graph to uh, make particles come out of a mesh and we're going to sample the texture that's applied to them so that the particles match the mesh's color. So the first thing before we get started, you're going to want to make sure that you have this um, visual effects graph installed. Now it does say it's only production ready for the high definition render pipeline, but I am using it here on just the universal render pipeline and it does run on my iPhone and my Pixel 2. Maybe it's not production ready, but it seems to be in a pretty good state. So now, the first thing that we're gonna wanna do is let's right click and create an empty game object. We're just gonna call this uh, object parent. And then underneath here, let's right click, create a 3D object, and we're gonna make the particles come out of a textured cube. So we have a cube here. Now we need to apply a material to it. Uh, let's just call this unlit. And let's drag this onto the cube. And then let's go universal render pipeline and let's go uh, give it an unlit shader and then let's put that texture on it. So you could use any texture. I'm just going to use the texture that I applied on this beer can. So here's the texture here. Looks fine. Uh, now we need to create a uh, point cache for this cube that we can use in our visual effects graph. So let's do that. So let's go to window, uh, visual effects, utilities, point cache, bake tool. And we're just using a Unity primitive cube, so let's choose that. And then make sure you hit export UVs here because we're going to use those to set the color. And then save pcache to file. Just save it as cube. Cool. So here is our point cache uh, bake file. And let's right click. And now we just need to create a visual effects, visual effects graph. And let's just call this cube. Cool. Now let's drag this into the scene. It's got to be at the same level uh, as our mesh, and let's just rename it VFX actually. And uh, we want to make sure that this cube mesh transform matches that of our visual effects graph. So let's paste component values there. Cool. So let's go in and make this look like something. Okay, so the first thing, let's make this, um, let's make it output like 5,000 particles. So set the spawn rate and the capacity to like 5,000. That looks cool. Set velocity random. We're not going to use that. Uh, lifetime random, let's go like 0.5 to, I think 1.5 looked pretty good in my opinion. And then update particle, we're going to create a block and we're just going to add, um, oops, not sign distance field. We just want to add force in a constant direction. So let's just go force and then let's change this to like, I don't know, let's just go 0.5s across the board for now and leave this as absolute, so cool. Um, oh, a couple more things. So in the output quad, we are going to, I don't wanna set size over lifetime, set color over lifetime. Um, we just, I, I don't want this to fade in, I just want it to fade out. So let's command delete to delete that node and then this alpha will bring this up to 255 so it's just going to fade out. So that's perfect. And then main texture, um, let's just use Unity's default particle texture, so. Just type in default here and then default part default particle system cool let's choose that that looks pretty good but you'll see that our particles are now um, just coming out of like one single point there so let's change that so if we go up here to initialize particle we can now add our point cache from our cube so let's choose that here, cube. And then what we wanna do is create block. Let's set position from map. So set position from map, and we're gonna pass in this position here. Cool. So now you see that this looks like something. So we're emitting all the particles from our cube mesh. But you'll notice that all these, cu all these particles are actually moving with our cube. Whenever we move our object parent, you see that the particles are just emitting locally basically we want to change that to world space so what we can do is anywhere here just change this to world but then you'll notice that the particles do not move with our object so right now we're emitting in local space we need to change that to world space so the way we can do that is down here let's create a block and let's just go set position and so up here we set position from map 
So now we can do get position attribute, not target position. We want to do get position, uh, get attribute position. Yes. So this is in local space, and we want to change the space. So let's make a change space node. And we want to change the space to uh, world space and then pass that into the set position. So this should give us the behavior that we want. Yeah, beautiful. So now, how do we get these particles to sample this texture? Well, Unity, I saw in a forum that Unity is coming out with an official way to do this, but as of right now, they recommend saving the uh, point cache UV data into the color node and then getting that color attribute and using that uh, to pass in UVs for the texture for setting the color. So the way that you would do that is this. So we can right click on the initialize particle block and we can just do, um, let's go, set color for map and then we're going to pass in the uvs so the x and y uvs are going to be r and g of the color attribute so then down here we can just go add another block for set color and we can now get the color attribute so get attribute color where is that why can i never find anything okay there we go so get attribute color and then we can pass that to a sample texture 2D node. So sample texture 2D, we're going to uh, pass the color in as the UVs. And now we're going to add that same texture that we applied to the cube and then pass this in for color. Why didn't that work? Oh, I think so down here, uh, set color over lifetime. We just want to set alpha only, not color. So yeah. Beautiful. Now you will see that our particles are matching uh, the texture. So one thing that I had to do when I was doing this for the can is I needed to set tiling and offset of this cube. So uh, if you're doing that, for example, let's set the tiling. Let's just get rid of this black. Um, so you'll see when we change the tiling here, uh, the particles are not respecting that tiling. So what you can do is back in the visual effects graph here, you'll see set color from map. There's a bias and a scale. So for scale, you can set the tiling, and for bias, you can set the offset. So we had so 0.81 for the tiling. So we'll just put that in the Y value scale. And now you'll see that the particle colors are respecting the tiling. So yeah, that's it. Now you can move this object parent, and the particles emit in world space. And uh, they're sampling the texture that's applied to this cube. All right, so that's it. That's all I got for today. Um, definitely let me know in the comments what you guys want to see in the next video. And with that, we'll see you next time. Goodbye.